Hey, um, I make pita bread, uh, Israeli pita bread, and a lot of people have asked me to do a tutorial on that. So I am going to do that. Now, when I make pita bread, I triple the recipe, but I'm gonna give it to you as if it's just a single recipe. Usually makes between uh, 12 to 18 pitas per recipe, depending on size. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're, you're going to have, um, you're gonna dissolve a half of a cup of hot water, very hot water, with your yeast. So this is the recipe here. I guess, Caleb, if you wanna show it, it has sugar, salt, yeast, water, flour, and then you're gonna have your lukewarm water uh, additional. Okay, so first we're gonna do is we're gonna dissolve a half a cup of lukewarm water and sugar with the yeast. Okay, so I'm gonna do that real quick, but I'm going to do it, I'm gonna triple the recipe, but anyway. So this is actually the cup and a half that I need. Now, a pack of yeast is two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Two, four, or two, four, five, six and a quarter, be three quarters of yeast. Okay, and then the sugar. One teaspoon, so we're going to do three teaspoons of sugar. One, two, and this is amazing. You just, it's just amazing. And we're going to let that sit for about 10 minutes. And then we'll be back. Okay. Okay, Bye. so this is what your yeast is going to look like. Okay, see how much it has risen? Okay, now that's mine. Remember, I've tripled the recipe. Okay, scoot back just a little bit. So, okay, remember, this is what you've done so far. You've done one packet of dry yeast, which is two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, and you have dissolved that in hot water, a hot half cup of water, and you have added a teaspoon of sugar. So that's really all that's in here. Now what we're gonna do is add the flour. And you will add, if you're just making one batch, which is what I would suggest until you get the hang of this, um, you will add three and a half cups of flour. And um, you will also add the salt, which is one and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the salt so we don't forget it. Okay, so instead of one and a quarter, I'm doing three and three quarters, okay? So one, two, three and three quarters, okay. Now I'm just gonna start this on stir, and this will this will max out this um, mixer because I am going to do um, about ten cups of flour. It's a lot, of but um, it's okay. All right, so remember to place just place your flour in. One, two, and this saves your arm if you just do it low on the mixer. As long as you have a kneading hook, that's fine. That's all you need. Uh -huh. okay, three, and if you're doing just the one, then you'll just add another half of a cup. Um, now you will, as this gets thicker, you may have to add water to it. Um, because it's going to get too dry. So um, just add, and that's what your extra additional water is for. Now you're just going to be adding an extra cup of hot water 
I have three cups here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for now, the video off for now. I will finish my flour, putting all that in, and I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. Okay, so now we have incorporated all the flour, and you have added in the water. Now keep in mind, with one batch, you're just using one cup, so you're going to maybe use maybe three quarters of a cup. Um, you just need to kind of gauge it, but this is what the dough looks like. See all that? It's some good stuff. Okay, now see how it's maxed out my machine? I mean, it is, it is definitely maxed out. I can only triple the recipe, and we use, we use it a lot, and what I do is I make it, and I bake it, and then I freeze it. So then all we have to do is just take it out and thaw it and eat it. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it out from here. You can also mix it by hand, obviously. And we're gonna add, we're gonna have to knead it for a minute. So you're gonna put your, your flour out. <clears throat> and then it's gonna come right on out. See there? All right. Now, you're going to have to add a little bit more extra flour on there. And all we need to do is get it to a nice ball. And of course yours is gonna be a lot smaller. But we're trying to get it to a good state of not being sticky. You don't want it sticky. And it'll also help that you don't use all your flour, I mean all your water as you're mixing it. You know, I didn't use all of that. So you're just trying to get it into a nice ball. Okay, so it is it is definitely no longer sticky. Hmm. Okay, now what I've done is I've added a, about a tablespoon, a uh, couple tablespoons of olive oil into a big pan. And you're just gonna grease it up a little bit because it is going to rise. You're gonna let this sit and it, you're gonna let it sit for about an hour and you're gonna cover it with saran wrap, okay? Or some kind of cover, not just um, not just a towel. Okay, so I usually do the bottom first. Get it all nice and goopy covered so that when it does rise, it, it comes easily out, okay? So we're gonna... All right. Now, you're just gonna let that rise. Um, and in the meantime, you need to preheat your oven. And I cook mine on a stone. So if you don't have a stone, just use a regular cookie sheet. But you're gonna preheat your oven and your cookie sheet or your stone to 450 degrees. And these are only gonna cook for about a minute on one side and I think 30 seconds or a minute maybe on the other. So it's very fast and you, you flip them and they're they are so delicious. Um, but we're gonna let this rise for an hour and a half and I'll show you our next step. All right, see you soon. Okay, hello. What we did was we had, it, it rose up this high and I have divided the dough into three. So there's gonna be two more sets. But this is the one set. I took it over here and I kneaded it. And I'm making it into a long rope. Okay? And you're going to take it and take it so that it goes, see? And you're going to take little pieces of it and you're going to um, roll them out with a rolling pin or you can do it by hand. This is also good if you want to make little individual pizzas. You can do that as well. And um, so sometimes I save the dough for that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is 
take a little bit of your dough. I use a pizza cutter. It's easy. Okay, and this is very little bit, but you're gonna and you're gonna flour your keep it good and floured, obviously. And get a few ready to go. Because we're gonna put them in the oven in the, in the hot oven. And you will have made your oven, um, heated it up to 450 degrees. Okay, and I don't make them in any particular shape, I just flatten them out. And you're gonna flatten them to about, I guess a quarter of an inch. Okay, and you're gonna probably get about um, I would say six or seven going before you're going to put them in the oven. But keep in mind, see, you could even do that for a small pizza because it'll get bigger if you want it. And this rope is, can make, like I said, anywhere from 12 to 18. So you just flatten them out. You can also flatten them out by hand. This is fun for little kids. If they wanted to do that, you do that as well. I'm just draping them over here. And I'll show you, we'll just do enough to get going in the oven. Now, okay, so your oven is now at 450 degrees. Your pan needs to be at 450 degrees as well. because you want to have nice brown spots on there from where it rests on the oven. Okay, so. Okay, here's, here's the hot stone. And I'm gonna put it on just like this. You can stay right there, hon. And these are gonna cook for about one minute on each side. Okay, you can put obviously more, but this is just to show you. Close it up and let it cook for about a minute and I'll be back with you in about a minute. Okay, so it's been about a minute and we're going to, okay, this is how they look on the one side. Now you're gonna flip them over See that brown, a little bit of brown, that's what you're gonna want. Okay, this won't take long, so I'll see you in about one minute. Okay, so Bye. between cooking times, you need to get those other ones prepped, just like this. And I get them lined up, so all I have to do is put them back on, um, on the, the stone. Okay, so we are going to, let me get a nice pan. Usually you use my wood pan, but we'll use this for now. Okay. See the little bit of brown right there? That's what you're gonna want. You want a little bit of that brown. I just put them right in there. And it doesn't take long. You can make them a little more brown if you want, but that makes them real soft. See this? See there? That's the look you're going for. Okay. Stay right there. I'm gonna add these other ones now. Okay, I've prepped a few here. And once you get going, it doesn't take long. Okay. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so as this is cooking in the oven, I'm gonna do my other. Um, you didn't get a chance to see how I knead it after it's risen, so I'm just gonna do that for you really fast. Okay, I'm taking another third. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to my flour surface, and I'm just gonna start working my rope. 
And it's okay if it's got holes in it because it's a pita bread. It's going to have holes in it. And it's just fine. So I'm making this longer and longer. And that is all you do. Okay. They tell you to let it rise, but as you're going, it's going to rise anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, and, you, and it'll rise, and then they just say to rise, I think, another 30 minutes. So we're gonna pull another batch out. Forgive my oven because something spilled on it the other day. Okay, these need another little bit more. Yeah, they need about another 45 seconds. So anyway, you get the point. I just wanted to show you how I need them. Um, and then I'll show you when it's all final. We, we should have about 30 or so, 35. Uh, pita breads. All right, I'll see Okay, you so what we've done is now we've got probably about, mm, I, we're Stop back, and we have got about, I would say this is around 30, and I'm getting ready to pull some more out of the oven. This is the last batch. Now, I got this recipe uh, from myjewishlearning.com, and I guess just search pita bread. Um, I'll try to post the link on there as well on the video but this is so good and it's so easy so this is the last of the batch and they're turning out great they're going to be super soft see this um pan over here and show them this color this is the color you're kind of going for you're going for this these light brown colors on there and i'll open one up here in a minute See there? It's beautiful. Okay, and these freeze wonderfully. I usually leave about eight or so out. Charlie's the one who mostly eats them with hummus. Uh, the boys eat them too. They might drizzle um, honey and butter over them, cinnamon, something like that. Um, anyway, um, it's very, very good. And then the rest I just freeze in Ziploc bags. So when you open them, Okay, this, this is what they look like. They're very soft and they're gonna be just like this and they're amazing. And we're seeing that um, today is Friday, so we're beginning Shabbat, so Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy. Here you go.